Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the North Suburban Beat. I'm your host, Steve Hahn, and I'll be bringing you the latest items of interest from our great 10 North Suburban cities. On today's show, we visit the newest Arden Hills commercial development, and it's one with a twist. Find out about a fundraiser for the Roseville Parks that includes local beers, wines, and food trucks. And we'll check out a CTV volunteer at some television making right here in the community. But first, we meet a new face in the Moundsview School District. Students returning to Irondale High School this year were greeted by a new principal. Principal Eric Nelson, who came to this district from Edina, told us that he's excited about the level of academic excellence at the school. He was chosen by a committee of parents, staff, and students, and they were most impressed about his experience demonstrating his clear commitment to ensuring that all students realize success. So I grew up in, in St. Paul on the east side and uh, then my folks moved out to uh, Maplewood when I was, you know, just before high school and so I went to Tartan High School and, and uh, after four years there I went to the University of Minnesota and loved my time there and uh, finished up my undergraduate and, and master's degree at the University of Minnesota um, and went to, began my teaching career over in West St. Paul at Henry Sibley High School. And I taught mostly history, some U.S. history, some European history and things like that. Um, and about halfway through my time at Henry Sibley, I decided to get into a graduate program that would lead to administrative licensure. And so, I uh, went over to St. Mary's University over at their Minneapolis campus and, and did my admin work. And uh, from there I went to Edina High School where I was the Dean of Students for a year. And then uh, after a year I was promoted to an assistant principal position where I worked for 11 years. So I had 12 total years in Edina before I, I came over here to Irondale. What can a local committed developer a non-traditional design and an excited city make out of one corner in the heart of town. Phase one of Lexington Station in Arden Hills is open and driving by you can see it doesn't look like most suburban strip malls. Developer Nick Roberts says he aimed for the look of a classic train station. The architectural features which help carry out this theme include the use of arches and brick, lots of glass, and the color selections lighting with an antique carriage feel and a patio area on the west side of the building suggesting a train platform carry out the theme. The second phase of the three-part project is expected to include a mix of retail tenants. Hi, I'm David Grant, Mayor of Arden Hills, and today we're at Lexington Station, one of our newer developments here. 15,000 square foot development that was originally started in the planning stages in uh, July of 2013 by Roberts Management Group. The building itself uh, gets its name from the architecture which was designed to resemble a, a train station from the past, thus the name Lexington Station. And Roberts Management Group came uh, with a plan to purchase that property and they also owned the surrounding properties here. Came with a master plan to over the course of perhaps 10 years build five different buildings. Craft beers, local wines, food trucks, live music, this all sounds like fun, right? One of the most heralded new local fundraising events happens October 3rd at the Oval in Roseville, and it's fittingly called Tapped and Uncorked. If you listen to the beer show on KSTP 1500, you know how excited the craft beer community is about the exposure this brings to their locally brewed products. And all the proceeds go to the Friends of the Roseville Parks. You can find out more on their website at pourforparks.com. This event is a craft brew and wine event. Uh, we wanted to bring something new to Roseville. We're looking to do something for some of the younger generation of Roseville who tends to go off to Highland Park and they tend to go to some of the bigger craft brew events elsewhere. And so we decided to bring it to Roseville and do it here at home. And it's being organized and sponsored by the Friends of Roseville Parks. 
an organization that's been in, uh, working for 45 years to raise funds to beautify the parks of our community. It's not your typical beer fest. This is something that's going to be a little bit, a uh, little bit classier, maybe than a lot of the beer fests. It's not just go out there and drink. It's out, go out there and appreciate the, the flavors. You can go from a tent to tent to tent and taste 16 different kinds of beer. Maybe 16 breweries will be there. They might have more than one kind of beer, so there will be lots of tasting opportunities, as much as you want. And we particularly wanted to include Minnesota wineries as well, because not everybody's a beer fan, but a lot of people enjoy tasting wines, and those wineries will have more than one kind of wine. The 12-piece uh, band, High and Mighty, of course, playing all night long, and we'll have games. Uh, bean toss, bean bag toss, and uh, Hammerschlagen. <laughs> you have to come to the party to find out what Hammerschlagen is. But things to do, music to listen to, uh, beverages to drink, and food to eat. It's going to be a ball. We like to go behind the scenes sometimes here at CTV to spotlight our volunteers. Each one offers a special story and a different point of view. And that's what public access is all about. This month, we want you to introduce you to Matthew Haga. He worked for a year to learn about video equipment and help produce two shows with us about act his activities. Here we see him behind the scenes at KSTP as he meets Ken Barlow and learns how they send us the weather forecasts. So, Ken. Yes, sir. How are you? Have you been in the business? Um, 25 years. A, a really long time. Probably older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Can, um, how did you start? I started liking weather when I was a little boy. And then I went to school and learned more about it. What is the easiest? Easiest job is meeting people like you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the easiest part of my job. Is it hard to stay in fight in the green stream? It is at first. Have you done it? No. Do you want to do it? <laughs> Push it again. Isn't that cool? Don't you feel all powerful? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works for me. The cool thing is when they put us up on that top screen. I don't know if anyone's back there or not. I don't think they are. Oh, thank you. See, now you have the background behind you. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's already good. It's good for you. Yeah, but you get three hours. 